Hi everyone. So in the 76th annual conference of Indian Radiological and Imaging Association, I got the privilege to speak on a topic which is very, very close to my heart, opportunities after radiology residency. I had a great time in the conference at the eve of the session. I got an opportunity to speak to a lot of radiology resident and some of them have attended the session. However, a lot of them as usual could not attend the morning session. So they requested a recording of the session. I am sharing some of the wonderful photos that we clicked during the eve as well as the recording of the session that I took on 28th January in radiology conference. I have impacted undergraduate medical, medical undergraduate students about PG medical entrance exam and uh, radiology is not an undergraduate subject. So for if not all, for a lot of them, I am the first radiologist that they, they come across during the undergraduation. And a lot of people pick up radiology without having any idea about it. So before going on to the topic, just give you some scenario. If I talk about radiology craze, I did a small survey on a small telegram group where almost 5,000 undergraduate students participated that if given a choice which branch would you like to do a post-graduation in. 21% of the students opted for radiology. I went further and I took a telegram poll in the students who are first and second year radiology resident that why did they choose radiology. Just to go to a funnier, funnier aspect. If I more objectify 75% people said that they want to have a good work-life balance. 16% people said because it's a trend and topper's choice. 9% felt it's easy to settle and 2% gave the answer as that their family member is a radiologist. When I asked them how much effort did they put up in getting into radiology? Were they studying whole night? Sometimes sleeping with the books on their hand? When their friends were enjoying party, they were probably busy reading from some of the apps. When I objectified that how much effort did they put in getting into radiology, 42% said that they studied continuously during MBBS but enjoyed MBBS life also. 21% said they only studied. 30% said they dropped multiple years to get into radiology and 7% said that they spent a lot of money to get into radiology. So if I ask a very, very straightforward and blunt question, what is their status in radiology presently? Are they happy in radiology? 47% said they are happy, satisfied and content. The rest 40% said they are partially happy and satisfied. 8% said they are happy but not content. And 5% were dissatisfied. Then I asked them what is something that they are missing. 21% said they are absolutely fine. 47% said they are missing patient interaction. 20% felt that there is not enough money in this branch. And 17% felt that they are not adding enough value to the society. So, I hope all of you have gone through this viral video that happened. <laughs> you glorified photographers. <laughs> So I used to get a lot of messages from first year, second year, third year radiology resident as well as from undergraduate student that that what she has done and she is trying to undermine the importance of radiology. And I always say this to the students that for me, radiology acts as the center of gravity of medicine, who is being bombarded by questions from various other specialties on day to day life. Every day I am being bombarded by questions from various other specialties like surgeon, gynecologist, ophthalmologist. Where are the patients in this entire scenario? The patients are here. So I always say, when the patients have a problem, they come to these specialities. And when they have a problem, they come to us. So there's always a different aspect to look at it, into the things. I always believe that as a radiologist, I am not a doctor for these patients. If I'm into the diagnostic radiology, rather I'm a doctor for these doctors. So you can always be a part of a problem or can be a part of a solution. I always look at a part of a solution specifically for those people who feel that something is missing in the radiology. So now let's come to the real topic, opportunities after radiology residency. 
I always believe, and I am a very very big fan of this Maslow hierarchy of need, which I say that it starts as a pyramid. At the bottom of the pyramid, you have basic physiological need, which include hunger, food, and this has to be satisfied before you move to any other need in the life. Once that need is satisfied, then comes the safety and the security need. Then comes the affiliation, belongingness, social need. Then comes the need of self-respect and esteem. And finally, comes the self-actualization. If I talk about an individual example for this, it includes hunger, stability of income, friendship, status, and self-fulfillment. In terms of an organization, it is basic salary, pension plan, cordial relationship with colleagues, job title, and achievement of goals. I will not say that this follow the same hierarchy, but to some extent, this is how most of these things follow. For a doctor, the first thing is obviously financial compensation. Then comes professional security. Then comes job satisfaction, and the last in the list is ethical challenges. So, what options do we have? We have some conventional path in radiology, which include or some unconventional path. The conventional path goes as further studies, start practicing or join a job. Uh, unconventional paths are research, entrepreneurship, sorry, sorry, sorry. entrepreneurship or teaching. Probably I am the best person to talk about all this because I have experimented with almost everything that is written on this slide in the life. In the further studies, after the residency, we have three broad options. You can go with DM, you can go with fellowships, or you can do senior residency. I believe that if you have an academic mindset, don't think twice. Just go with a DM program or a fellowship program. If you think that you want to go into the private practice, don't straight away go into the private practice after doing a post graduation. It's a good idea to take some experience because. It looks very easy that after three years you are well experienced to manage the patient, but normally it doesn't happen. So it's a good idea to do a senior residency for a year for a two, just to get a complete handholding about the patients. The various DM programs that are available in the country include in neuroradiology. Various hospitals offer this. AIMS, PGI are few of them. The complete list is available at websites, and I can also share it with you. Cardiac radiology and interventional radiology. AIMS Sri Chitra offer this DM course. And interventional radiology, a lot of hospitals are offering PGI, AIMS, CMC are few to mention. There are a lot of fellowship opportunities which are there. DMR three year course, fellowships vary from one to two years. Interventional radiology, the list is huge. MSK radiology, which is an, a, a very, very upcoming and a sought after sub specialty in radiology nowadays. GI and body imaging, fetal medicine and women's imaging, pediatric radiology, cardiac and chest imaging. I'm not going into the details of which institute. If somebody wants, I can share these lists with all of you. But they are available just at a click of a button in um, on on net. But I can also share it with you. We have many more fellowships: onco imaging, neuro radiology, diagnostic neuro radiology is another. Cross-sectional imaging. There is another thing that has happened. Even if you want to go into the private practice and you want to specialize into a specific modality, there are op options available where you can do a formal training into cross-sectional imaging or some some other places where ultrasound training is also available. And just radiology is another one. Now, as I told you, that even if you want to go to private practice, senior residency, I feel gives you a good opportunity. Which actually tells you what is radiology. Radiology is not what just we see in our undergraduation or in a post graduation as a resident. You have a lot of opportunities in the government for senior residency. If you go to Institute of National Importance, they do six monthly regular SR post interviews. In the government hospitals, there are annual regular SR posts. Um, for the regular post, usually it's a written plus interview, whereas for ad hoc, it's just an interview, and this. Is always available on the websites of these hospitals. You can go towards private medical colleges to do senior residency. They are usually advertised on the website, and it's basically interview based. Now, a lot of people do not look at into this option, but corporate hospitals have, over a period of time, have become a very very good way to learn radiology. 
specifically the kind of infrastructure that is being available into the corporate hospitals give, give us a much, much better insight about learning them. Um, you can connect with the HR, you can send resume and you can get pay similar. But this exercise or this route should only be exercised for those students who have taken this call that they do not want to go into the academic setup and want to completely dedicate into the private setup. Plenty of opportunities are available outside India. Indian radiologists are still considered to be one of the best in terms of the academic knowledge that they have. There are a lot of fellowship opportunities in Canada. Usually you apply in hospitals. Uh, when I did the fellowship, the waiting period was two to three years. Probably it has, I think it is same. Um, you apply on their website. They can take an interview on the Zoom and if need, they can call you an in-person interview. And by in a, in a two year, usually you get a fellowship. And if, if you are very good in the fellowship, they directly offer you the consultancy position over there. US is, we all know, is USMLE based. Uh, you have to go with the hassle of completing these steps. One, two, if you do the three also, it is pretty good. A um, lot of people talk about the alternative pathway. As the time is passing, the alternative pathway is getting increasingly difficult as continuously four year of fellowship has become, is becoming a challenge nowadays. UK is another option. You do an FRCR with the efforts of uh, IRI. Now all these parts are being conducted in India nowadays. Middle East, plenty of opportunities are available in the Middle East. I have not touched upon uh, the opportunities in Australia. And I mean, I know a lot of people who have moved to some of the areas which have not been explored by us like Norway, etc. But there are also options. All I would say is, that as a radiologist, um, even the world understands the academic learning that we have as a radiologist. So there are plenty of opportunities that are available. When I talk about practice, you can join a private diagnostic lab, you can join a private hospital, or you can start your own center. But a word of caution over here, my sincere advice to everyone that who is trying to go into this, do not try to go straight away after doing the residency. It's, it's a good idea to take a hands-on experience in uh, where you have a hand-holding, where you actually understand that how your academic learning of the residency can be extrapolated to actual patient management. There are a lot of international options specifically for the people who are missing something that they have picked up radiology without knowing anything, but now they lack patient interaction. Interventional options are great. Um, when I talk about interventional option, we are talking about vascular intervention only, but MSK and hepatocellular intervention is also a very, very major area that is being coming up. Hi friends, I am Dr. Nishit and I am presently working as Associate Professor in the Department of Radiology at VMMC and Subvision Hospital. And most of my time, I am, I am doing the diagnostic tests for patients with sports injuries, bony tumors, and the rheumatological conditions and I'm also involved in the therapeutic management of such patients in that I do a lot of musculoskeletal interventions for such patients and that gives me a lot of satisfaction in the sense that I am directly involved in the treatment of patients and I also teach a lot of these procedures and the uh, modalities to my students and that adds a sense of purpose to my life. Thank you. Those who are interested in MSK, there is a conference that is happening in August in Jaipur and I would recommend all the residents to go and see that how MSK radiology is evolving over a period of time. Um, AI, we are all talking about AI, a lot of students ask me, so I always say that the clever machine will make worker more productive more often than they will replace them. AI cannot replace radiologists, however, it can facilitate everyday tasks performed by the radiologists. A lot of people are working in AI nowadays, solving public health problem. Dr. Kalyankar has also mentioned a few of them. I am also working at a lot in this particular sector. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I am Kritika Rangarajan. I am an onco-radiologist at Ames, Delhi. And my primary area of research is artificial intelligence in radiology. Um, AI is uh, also the reason why I took up radiology and it endlessly fascinates me what all technology can do um, and, and it gives an incredible sense of satisfaction to see how radiology is at the forefront of 
uh, leading technological developments in medicine in general, how it's at the cutting edge of new technology and um, new innovations that really come up. Um, and, 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 and that also gives me a personal satisfaction in actually being a part of leading this change. For those of you who are worried about um, or, or are regretting taking up radiology because of AI and how well it's doing, um, just a word uh, of, of encouragement for you. It's, it's a great idea to lead the innovation rather than being a bystander of change. Um, thank you, Dr. Rajat, for this opportunity. So another example where the people have dedicated their life completely into AI. And I believe that this is not a threat to us, rather it's a very, very big boon. Hello everyone, my name is Basant. Uh, all along my life, I have been interested in the innovative technologies that transform uh, not only our medicine, but also other aspects of life. This has led to me uh, to transition into my current role as a clinical product manager and chief medical officer for a health tech firm called Carpal. At Carpal, we work with radiology AI developers from across the globe to identify the right solution and help them to get used and deployed at hospitals and clinics across the world. Uh, this job pays me well. This My compensation is uh, commensurate with any radiologist who is doing private practice in uh, Delhi. Uh, more importantly, this uh, role has offered me uh, the freedom to follow my passion. Uh, this is a, there is a concept called uh, reactance in, in psychology. I'm a big fan of that. Uh, it basically means that uh, the biggest wealth anyone can achieve in their lifetimes is the ability to follow their passion. Uh, even though I have moved away from day-to-day -day clinical practice, this my current role has the potential to impact the lives of millions of patients and completely uh, transform the field of radiology in the coming years. Thank you. Um, so, entrepreneurship, I always believe that radiologists are the best brain in the society, but unfortunately, we do not uh, look into this particular aspect. I am not going into much into this particular topic as there was a separate talk on this. And um, teaching, I mean, uh, as I always say, that the best thing is that if your passion becomes your profession, so, um, if you have an academic mindset set up, you can go as a faculty in a medical college or as a private tutor. I mean, I'm sure that some of you have this nostalgic feeling of sitting up into these classes um, and uh, working in, into the public health area is another area where I feel that a lot of us can do this. So, I would like to thank specifically some people who have helped me in gathering those data, Rishabh, Kritika, Vasan, Nishit. Ashwini and Kari. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Rajit. Thanks for dancing the multiple parties.